This video will explain well-read students learn better from researchers at Google AI. Tons of these pre-trained transformer models like BERT, Roberta, T5, or GPT-2 have been open sourced. We can use tools like the Hugging Face Transformers Library to take these models and use them for whatever natural language processing task we're interested in. However, usually we don't have the resources to use the 11 billion parameter T5 model or the 12 layer 768 dimension BERT base model. To solve this problem, researchers have been looking into using knowledge distillation to construct, say, a six-layer BERT that retains most of the performance, like what's used in distill BERT. This paper proposes a new way of looking at using knowledge distillation of these off-the-shelf models for training these smaller, compact models that fit the resource constraints. Rather than initializing the smaller, compact model randomly, or by copying the weights of the teacher network before distillation, it helps enormously to pre-train the smaller model with mass language modeling as well. The algorithm explores using knowledge distillation on task-relevant unlabeled data. This is different from the data used for language modeling, like Wikipedia, Reddit articles, or the books corpus. This data describes settings like Amazon book reviews, where although there are 8 million reviews available, only 50,000 have been labeled by humans. Pre-training the students first makes the final network much higher performing and robust to different factors of constructing that unlabeled transfer set for distillation like the size of the data and the in-domain composition. In the end, the mini transformer trained in this way retains the performance of BERT base but is 31 times smaller and makes predictions 16 times faster. This video will explain well-read students learn better on the importance of pre-training compact models developed by researchers at Google AI. This paper presents the algorithm pre-trained distillation. The title of the paper, Well-Read Students Learn Better, is describing a novel way of looking at the pre-trained and fine-tuned pipeline with respect to these off-the-shelf, open-source, pre-trained models. So we have access to these models like BERT Base, BERT Large, Roberta, T5, the GPT models, and all of this are easily accessible through something like the Hugging Face API, but then we don't want to use those models for our tasks because we might have, say, a smaller GPU or, and we want to adapt it to our given needs and have faster inference times when we're deploying the model. So one way of compressing these models is to design a smaller model. So BERT has, the BERT large model I think has something like 24 layers and then the hidden dimension or the embedding size is something like 1024. So you might construct a new model that only has six transformer layers and say 512 hidden dimension. And so you'd compress that by having the uh, smaller compact model predict the labels from the larger teacher model, and this is known as knowledge distillation. But this paper is showing that instead of just using uh, knowledge distillation from the larger open source teacher model, it also helps to pre-train your smaller model with this mass language modeling test that's also used to pre-train the large open source models. So the algorithm goes by first pre-training the student model using mass language modeling and the plus denoting the next sentence prediction task as well, on a data set for language modeling. So this data set D sub LM and D sub T are two different data sets where the language modeling data sets describe things like Wikipedia or books corpus or say Reddit text, just kind of scraping like a massive amount of text compared to something like D sub T, which is more curated to the downstream task. So say you're doing something like IMDB movie reviews, sentiment or Yelp reviews or topic classification of news articles, this data would be more specific to that, like all of the Amazon reviews, they just aren't all labeled, denoting the D sub L compared to D sub T. So using D sub T, the unlabeled data that's still relevant for the downstream task we're interested in, you're then gonna do knowledge distillation with this off the shelf, massive teacher model, and then you end the algorithm by fine tuning the student network on the small labeled data set for the task of interest. If you're unfamiliar with knowledge distillation or mass language modeling pre-training, here's a quick overview of these techniques that are essential to this study in this paper. So the idea of knowledge distillation is that we have this large teacher network that's trained to predict a class label. So say it has this multi-class classification task and the seven is the slot of say something like uh, news or sports if it's classifying uh, news articles based on their topic. And then it applies this small probabilities to the other classes which kind of uh, give a signal to what it's learned about the given text example and what other classes it might be. So looking at say a technology article might be more similar to a business article than a sports article. And this is represented in the output logits of these teacher models. So we apply this softmax function, which uh, sums up these probabilities. So they equal one. And it is this kind of exponential of each of these things over the sum of the exponentials of all of the output logits. 
and the distribution of just applying no temperature to the softmax puts a ton of probability on the seven, a little bit of probability on the ones, and then an incredibly small amount of probability on the zeros in the original uh, vector. But what we usually do in knowledge distillation is we apply temperature to this softmax that is uh, computing the uh, predictions on the original logits. So you add the temperature and what the temperature does is it smoothens out this distribution and applies more probability to the ones and the zeros. So usually when you have these teacher networks like BERT large, they're pretty good at the task. So that it would probably be more like 80, like five, three, four, zero, zero, like this kind of a massive amount of probability on one of these items in the output logit. So you smoothen out the distribution with this temperature parameter. And then what's gonna happen is the student network is gonna be trained to predict this label distribution on the instance instead of just the one hot encoded vector of 000100 is gonna to try to match these logits of the teacher network. And the idea is that in this way, the teacher network is transferring the inductive biases that it's learned about the data into the student network. So this is the idea behind mass language modeling. We randomly mask out these tokens in the input, and then the model is trained to reconstruct the original input. So the data set that we're gonna be using for mass language modeling is a much more general data set than something that's specific to the task. So we'll do mass language modeling on say all of Wikipedia before fine tuning the model on something like IMDB movie reviews. This paper is addressing the question of should we pre-train the student or compact model? So we have all these open source models that we can easily access from something like the Hugging Face Transformers library, but we'll take a model like BERT and then we wanna compress it into a smaller compact model. So the way we'll do this is by using knowledge distillation and predicting the soft labels of the BERT large model with our smaller model. But the question this paper is exploring is should we also pre-train that smaller model with the mass language modeling objective? Another interesting component of this algorithm is the use of unlabeled data and knowledge distillation. So this framework of predicting the soft targets of a larger student ne or teacher network has also been used in SimCLR version two, where you're distilling the information from the self-supervised uh, contrastive learning algorithm into the supervised learning task. So it's interesting to see these algorithms that you get more gains from doing knowledge distillation with a massive data set. And then also particularly when that data set is more in domain like this D sub T compared to doing the uh, knowledge distillation transfer on the D sub LM or the language modeling data set like Wikipedia compared to say the Amazon reviews that just haven't been labeled yet. Well-read Students Learn Better begins the paper by comparing the pre-trained distillation algorithm with two other recent works that become famous in exploring this, how we're gonna use knowledge distillation with these pre-trained models for fine-tuning a smaller model for a downstream task. And these papers include patient knowledge distillation and distill BERT from researchers at Hugging Face. So the idea in patient knowledge distillation is to initialize the student network by cloning the layers of the larger model. So say we're transferring from BERT large, we would copy layers one, three, uh, five and seven to initialize the student network. Compared to pre-trained distillation, we're gonna start out with a random initialization and then uh, pre-train that model with mass language modeling. And so the student network has been initialized with uh, pre-training compared to just cloning the weights of the larger model. And then one of the detail in patient knowledge distillation is that you're gonna do distillation on the intermediate activations as well. So say comparing uh, the activations in layer six of BERT large with layer three of the uh, student network. So in distill BERT, they apply these same kind of techniques where they seed the student network by initializing it with copying the weights from the larger model. And then it also includes doing uh, these kind of intermediate activations with a cosine distance on the intermediate activations. And then it also a huge difference between pre-trained distillation and how distill BERT is implemented is distill BERT is doing uh, knowledge distillation on the language modeling task. Doing knowledge distillation from the teacher network that's been trained on this mass language modeling task on this mass language modeling task might sound appealing, but computationally it's very expensive. So if we're gonna to try to distill these uh, logits on this predict the mass token task, the reason it's so hard is because it has a very large vocabulary in most of these large scale models. So say BERT has a token vocabulary of 30,000 tokens. So when it does a task like the doctor ran to the emergency room to see masked patient, you see how it applies this high probability on his, the, another, uh, and her, but then you'd imagine the rest of the vocabulary words like airplane or tiger have an incredibly small probability on them. And that makes kind of smoothing out this distribution a bit odd and a bit challenging to do, especially with training it for the student network. So this is kind of showing the uh, problem behind doing this uh, language modeling distillation compared to just doing distillation on the classification task labels, where you only have say five labels of predicting a 
uh, what topic and articles about like news, sports, business, or something like that. These are some of the key differences between the pre-trained distillation algorithm, which is the topic of this paper, and patient knowledge distillation and distill BERT. So patient knowledge distillation and distill BERT are both initialized by copying weights from the teacher network. So they call it BERT based truncated, denoting copying say layers one, three, five, and seven, or this kind of one out of every two layer copying is what's used in uh, distill BERT. So distill BERT also does this language modeling knowledge distillation from the teacher network. Whereas this uh, pre-trained distillation starts off by doing language model pre-training with the student network. So then step two is to do knowledge distillation with the teacher network. And in this case, the teacher network is fine tuned on the label data D sub L. So you get pretty good performance by just predicting those logits and you don't necessarily have to uh, fine tune the student network on the label data. And then in the case of patient knowledge distillation, you're also doing knowledge distillation, but in this case also with the intermediate activations of the teacher network. And then in distill BERT, you just go right from uh, language modeling knowledge distillation into fine tuning the student network with the supervised learning on the label data set. This table shows that patient knowledge distillation and distill BERT perform pretty similar to these other baseline techniques limited to this model size of six layers and a 768 hidden dimension in the student network when pre being uh, fine tuned with this teacher network that has 12 layers and 768 hidden dimension, the BERT base model. So we're looking at the difference between uh, just starting off with the initialization from this teacher network and then fine tuning on the supervised learning data set on each of these uh, glue benchmark tasks and then pre-training and fine tuning, uh, pre-training and then doing the distillation or patient distillation and uh, distill BERT. So we see they all perform pretty similarly. But now in this paper, what we're going to do is introduce this unlabeled data set that is going to enhance and supplement our knowledge distillation pipeline. And we're also going to ablate the model size to find the optimal uh, trade-off between depth and width for the design of this uh, truncated student network with respect to the teacher and then the model and then the student and then we're also going to look at more factors of this unlabeled data set and how that improves this pipeline. These are the data sets used for further analysis in pre-trained distillation where we're pre-training the student network and then using knowledge distillation on this unlabeled data set shown in the unlabeled transfer data and then fine-tuning the student network on the labeled data. So these kind of data sets uh, vary pretty uh, enormously. So in the book reviews case, we have this true setting where we have 8 million different Amazon book reviews, but we've only taken the time to label 50,000. And so this is probably the most uh, commonly understood situation of semi-supervised learning. In the case of movie reviews and then the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank data set, we have these document level uh, Amazon movie reviews where we have 1.7 million of these, and then we're fine tuning into these sentence level sentiment classification. So there's a bit of a mismatch between the unlabeled transfer data and then the label data. And later we'll explore more about how important it is to have this unlabeled data set be in domain compared to the downstream uh, supervised learning task. So then these top two data sets are describing this task of natural language inference, where you have uh, two sentences and you're describing whether they are like entailment or neutral, like whether the first sentence implies the second sentence. So what they do for unlabeled transfer data is they concatenate these two different natural language inference data sets, and they also add the Quora question pair data set. So it's kind of interesting, this concatenation of the data sets, because uh, Quora question pair is detecting duplicate questions, and it doesn't really seem to overlap well with the natural language inference task. And then we also see the case of this really extreme uh, cardinality of the data or the size of the data mismatch where you go from 1.3 million examples into 2.5 thousand. The first question explored in the paper is can we just pre-train the word embeddings? So in the case of these transformer models, we first have these word indices that we use to look up into an embedding table. So the embedding table is the hidden dimension by the size of the vocabulary. So it's this matrix that says 30,000 different entries that are each these uh, distributed vectors of say 128 or uh, 256, 512 and so on. So this shows that only training the word embeddings doesn't work as well as pre-training the entire uh, transformer model. And this is kind of this whole idea of uh, transfer learning with the entire transformer model and not just the word vectors. Even though what they do is they put a one layer, uh, one transformer block ahead of the word embeddings. So you imagine a lot of uh, gradient goes into the word embeddings and maybe these would be better or something like that. But this shows that that doesn't perform as well as uh, doing the whole entire transformer. So the next idea is, can we just truncate a larger pre-trained model? So we might just want to uh, pre-train, say, uh, BERT base with 12 layers and the 768 hidden dimension, and then just copy those weights into these smaller models. But as this shows, if you're, say, 
if say a four layer 256 hidden dimension transformer is all you can fit into your GPU memory wise, or if it's uh, you know more optimized for inference time and latency, then you do get more gains by pre-training that smaller model as well. So no to both of these questions as shown by the uh, green chart outpacing both of these other techniques. The next question explored is with a limited computing budget, should you have a deeper network or a larger hidden dimension? So should you have the embedding table go into 256 dimension vectors and then have 256 be the hidden dimension for the whole model, or should you train a deeper network? And you can look at this chart if you wanna pause the video and uh, look at it more closely, but the takeaway is that it's better to have a deeper model than a wider model with this pre-training distillation algorithm. So coming back to the central motivation of this paper is we're looking for these compact student models that retain the performance of the larger teacher network, but then have a much uh, lower parameter count and then run the inference or make predictions much faster. So with respect to reducing the number of layers with the BERT based model being 12 layers and a hidden dimension of 768, this is how much you uh, reduce the parameter count going from say uh, six layers and 256 would have 12.8 million parameters compared to the original 110 million parameters. And this is how much faster it'll make predictions. This table shows the results for each of these tasks. So the first theme of this paper is that the overlap between the unlabeled data and then the label data matters a lot. So you see the Amazon book reviews where we have this true semi-supervised learning paradigm where the issue is just that we haven't labeled the data, but it is completely in domain for the downstream task compared to this MNLI task where we've added the core question pairs data to this uh, unlabeled data set that's used for distillation. So you see how you get this huge gain when the unlabeled data is in domain. The next question is how robust is this algorithm with respect to the size of the unlabeled transfer data set? So this is a pretty surprising finding where when you only use the mini uh, setting of the layers and the hidden dimension of the transformer, the pre-training and distillation significantly outperforms only using distillation with this same parameter count. So this uh, not filled in triangle is an 110 million parameter model compared to only 11 million parameters. So then you see the difference when you have 8 million unlabeled uh, Amazon book reviews, it performs about the same as 5 million, a little bit of a fall off at 3 million and then 1 million, but it still performs pretty well across these different uh, sizes of the unlabeled transfer data. And then most importantly, it performs much better than only doing distillation and not seeding the model with its own mass language modeling with the mini transformer. The next ablation shows how much better this algorithm is with respect to the in-domain composition comparing the labeled data with the unlabeled transfer data. So the way that this test is done is they compare the 100 most frequently used words in the unlabeled data and the labeled data to construct these subsets of the 8 million uh, labeled examples and sampling 1.7 million from the 8 million uh, totally available data to uh, control for this factor of how correlated the two domains are, the unlabeled set and then the uh, smaller labeled book review set. So you see that the green squares, the uh, pre-training and distillation or pre-training distillation then fine tuning the uh, not filled in squares performs much better than only using distillation with respect to this composition of the in-domain data. And this is really important because it might be the case that uh, the way that you're getting your unlabeled transfer data is not from just this case where you have all this data but you haven't labeled all of it. You might be getting this data from say, uh, you have the Yelp review task but you're using the, you're treating the IMDB data as unlabeled or the SST data as the unlabeled data, so it's less in domain. And this shows that this algorithm of pre-training the student network is much more robust to that kind of way of assembling the unlabeled transfer data. I think it's interesting to think about how we're getting this task specific unlabeled data, the D sub T in this pipeline of doing distillation on unlabeled transfer data. So in Don't Stop Pre-Training, they propose this heuristic where you embed all of the data into this space and then you use the nearest neighbors to the labeled data to sample these different points and then use them for the uh, further steps of pre-training in the case of this paper. Thanks for watching this overview of Well-Read Students Learn Better. This paper shows that it helps to pre-train the student models, the compact models that are better for the resource limits, avoiding out of memory errors and having faster inference times to pre-train that model with mass language modeling before doing knowledge distillation when taking one of these uh, pre-trained models like from the Hugging Face Transformers library and then distilling that information into the compact model. This paper shows that this pipeline of doing pre-training, then distillation, and then fine-tuning is robust to the size of the unlabeled transfer data as well as the in-domain composition. And with respect to the trade-off between uh, depth and width with respect to the resource constraints, it's better to have a deeper transformer model than have a larger hidden dimension. 
Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.